Good afternoon and welcome once again to my daily inspirational chat. This is episode number 627. The topic today is the sins of the father mess up your love life. And I'll break that down pretty quickly for you once I get into it. Before I introduce to do that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am, what I'm about. My name is Barry Selby. I'm doing these talks every day, by the way, on Facebook Live, and I'll tell you about that in a moment as well. Um, where was I? Yes, my name, <laughs> my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert. And I help... Hi, Della. Nice to see my broadcast. Um, I help strong, successful women... Well, actually, no, I help women, period, to live their life in authenticity, power, strength, and have their best life. I'm playing with I'm playing with titles because it's evolving literally this weekend has been very interesting about how my message is coming through and what I'm delivering. But one thing's very clear. I'm a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I do these talks every day called Messages for the Masculine Inspiring a Feminine Heart. And today's episode is number six hundred and twenty seven. And topic today is the sins of the father mess up your love life. I think is what I said. Something like that. Um, and I'm going to start with a little conversation I had with my dad yesterday, actually. Um, I call my dad every week. He's back in England, um, now in a uh, nursing home. Um, and the conversation was interesting because the first time I've spoken to him in a while now, where he seemed very upbeat and basically happy. He wasn't, like, euphoric, but he was happy. He wasn't in the down the dumps like he usually is, and that's, like, every week. And I, I can track that back to the shift that's happened since he's moved out of the flat, the apartment in, in American terms, that he and my mother shared for 20 plus years until she passed away six and a half years ago. When she passed away, he stayed in the, in the flat. Now they've been together almost 60 years. And I'm gonna speak about that, the, the enmeshment part of that in a moment. And so he was staying in the same flat that they were in so long because he didn't want to leave her memories behind. In fact, he was sitting in that space for basically six and a half years. And due to some circumstances that happened um, serendipitously, I suppose, he ended up having to be in the nursing home for something that happened, and then opening showed up right when he was there to stay there, which is so grateful he got to do that. So he moved all his stuff into the, um, some, it's like, um, what call it, like a group facility where a lot of people live, elderly people. I'm trying the right term. Nursing home sounds like the right term. Anyway, so when I spoke to him yesterday, he seemed somewhat upbeat, which was a pleasant surprise. And that's 92. And he basically, for, for the longest time, I mean, for the last six plus years, he was saying he was looking forward to leaving the planet to be back with my mother, back with his wife, which is very romantic. But it, again, back to enmeshment, I'll get to that in a second. And he wasn't gonna move on. That was the plan, he wasn't gonna move on in this life. He was like, want to move on in the next life. And so, Yesterday is the first time I think I've heard him talk about things in a positive way, like there's something to live for. Not necessarily to live, like go climb a mountain, but the fact he wasn't preoccupied with leaving. He was actually enjoying being in the present. And that's a big shift, which is powerful and wonderful to hear. Now, the thing that I want, the thread I want to unravel, <laughs> to take apart, is the fact that he was for so many years so hooked into this feeling about life wasn't worth living because my mother had passed away. Now, one of the things that happened, by the way, I found out a while ago from my brother, and he told me this, is that my mother, my father actually had been planning to, had wanted to leave before my mother. He was hoping he would die before she would. And basically when my mother passed away, she was 80, 83, I think. I'm gonna remember my maths in my head. No, younger than that, 81. My mum was in her early 80s, my dad was in his late 80s, because this was now, it was 2012, so almost seven years ago. So the truth sorry, I want to speak to is that I recognize that my parents had a very, very long-term relationship, almost 60 years, but a very enmeshed relationship and a very codependent one. Now, codependence is a topic I've talked about quite a bit, but I want to speak to my own pattern because I want to talk about the father, the, the sins of the father, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's put in the title and then ideally give you some suggestions, some input and some insight so maybe you can change the course of your love life going forward. Yes, you may get value from this. <laughs> That's the plan anyway. So looking back, I see very clearly, and this is the wonderful thing about hindsight, you get to see clearly, 2020 hindsight, 
Looking back at my parents, I got to see how my early dating life was very much modeled after my parents' relationship. Not something I did intentionally, at least not, not like I really think about it, it just that I was going, that's the way to do it. I just took it on, that's the way I believed it to be. And for most of us, me included, we do that when we're not aware of anything different. We actually sit in this paradigm where our relationship choices are governed by the experiences we were raised with. And in my case, I'm very clear, there's some th certain things I've talked about before about the way my parents interacted, but particularly the codependent enmeshment piece. And I've talked about codependence before, but just as a quick Cliff Notes piece, codependence is a victimize, victimizer victimizing experience. Yes, I'm being blunt about it. When you're in a codependent relationship, your feelings are based upon the other person's actions. Meaning that when that person, tell, when, they, when they tell me they love me, I feel better. But if they don't tell me they love me, I don't feel so good. Like we're literally, our, our thermostat, our ability to lift or, 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 or fall is predicated upon what they tell us. So when, in that case, like I was clear with my mother and my father, that when my dad wasn't giving my, giving the, and say this nicely, <laughs> yeah. When my father was basically being nice to my mother, she was happy. But when he wasn't happy, she wasn't either. And it wasn't anything that he was being said. It was in the, like the energetic. It was so enmeshed and again, so codependent. And so I became, I'm very clear about my early relationship and dating life was extremely codependent. My, my mood would be absolutely, and I'm the guy, and in theory I shouldn't have this, but I was the guy, but I was still very, um, I can say this, my mood was very much based upon how she made me feel. She had control. And that's the victimizer, victimized experience that we have, or victimizer, victim experience that we have. And this is the thing about codependence. It's subtle because we don't know that's wrong. <laughs> but it is a trap to fall into, or it is a trap we fall into, when we don't realize that we're autonomous beings. And this is the thing that I've been unpacking and whining for years. And I teach this in my coaching, but also what I've learned as a model to show other people you don't have to do this is that when you can unwind and undo that that Gordian knot of enmeshment, <laughs> that codependent model, the uh, trap, you start to live life more fully. And I've talked about this over the Valentine's week last week about how for single people it's a great time to celebrate loving yourself rather than being upset, disturbed, lonely because you don't have that love in your life. Because again, that's a codependent trap. So bring it back to self and being absolutely, um, and I, I use this term carefully, self-centered in the sense of loving yourself first, uh, caring about your heart, being comfortable and caring about who you are as a being, not being egotistical, like I'm in charge of everything and I run the world, not that my, that, that self-centered, but self, like big S self, super self-centered, <laughs> then you become less needy of somebody else. And that trap of being so needy that you'll actually put up with somebody who gives you crap, which is what people do, will be a much shorter path to freedom. So a couple of quick things. Some side effects of being codependent, and I mentioned about what my parents went, were doing and what my dad did after my mom passed away, is that when the other person is around, your life feels like it's black and white, it's void, it's, it's, it's dull. When they're in your life, you feel great. If that's going on for you, that's an indication of codependence. If your hard work is of no value, if they don't like it, that's a sign of codependence. If, um, if they don't do what you want and you get upset, that's codependence. There's a, there's a few little angles of this on either side of the conversation. There's a few more, but I won't put them in here. So let me just throw a couple of things on the table because if you've experienced this and you know you can really feel what I'm talking about lines up for you, then here's a couple of things. One is the reason, well, it's not the reason, a reason for the codependent, um, I, I was thinking about trap, I'll find another word, but the codependent paradigm to play in, the reason why that happens for more and more of us, one is because our culture supports it very evidently, but more importantly, is because we think that the source of love is out there. And this is an error in approach. Perhaps it's the biggest one of all, is that we think that somehow it's the other person's job to make us happy. And they bring the love, and we will only feel loving when they're in our lives. 
that is a serious mistake and an error and a, sorry, excuse, mistake and an error and approach. I'm trying to conflate those together. So what to do differently? Well, it might seem obvious, but the truth is that loving yourself is the way out of this paradigm. Now, I'm not suggesting that you become so independent you don't need a relationship. Actually, I'm saying that. <laughs> what I'm not saying though, is that you're so independent you won't want a relationship. That's the difference, need and want different. When you love yourself fully and you embrace who you are and you care about who you are, you take care of yourself, you respect yourself, you honor yourself, you forgive your judgments, you do all the work on your inner work, on the mental, emotional and physical levels and spiritual for that matter, you connect to that place inside. When you do that fully and regularly and consistently, first of all, you don't need anybody to make you happy because you are happy as you are. Secondly, and this is the secret, <laughs> it makes you more attractive because you're not putting out the hooks of neediness to anybody. Now, some people thrive, and narcissists especially thrive on this, is they look for someone who needs them. And then they can just feed, they sort of feed into that hook, that pulling them in, and they get very, um, well, but if you, if you get a fallen, if fallen relationship with a narcissist, it's a painful experience. I've got friends and I've been through that, and I, I have had clients like that, and it is such a challenge to disengage because it's almost too good to be true, because it is too good to be true when you're with a narcissist. Anyway, that's another topic in another conversation. I've talked about narcissism before, and other places I may talk about it again, but in this context of just codependence, when you are loving who you are, and you actually fill up your own tanks first. Like, um, imagine if, own, if you have your own love tanks inside. When you fill them up yourself, then you can give from an overflow, and if somebody gives it to you, that's an overflow too. You don't need their love. You can enjoy it, but you don't need it. And that difference between need and want are two important things. And in relationship choices, if you can choose a relationship from a place of want versus need, it's a much healthier place to come from. So, I'll make sure I cover what's said in the title. So, the sins of the father will mess up your love life. Yes, I covered that. <laughs> so, this, this conversation is not a simple, like, oh, one, two, three, four step process, but I will say these things ahead of time, or, and I will say these things as well. First of all, Self-love is a massively underrated but vital skill and key to have your relationship life improve both out there and in here. Secondly, when you are ready to drop the baggage from parents, because it's really true as your father and your mother, you get both, you get married for both patterns, you will be free to love properly. So I'm going to put two links in the comments just intentionally, one of which is a self-love practice because there's always room for more self-love. And if you haven't practiced a conscious, if you haven't got a conscious practice of self-love, I recommend my guided meditation because it will lead you through the steps to, to practice self-love in a way that is simple, efficient time-wise, and highly effective. Secondly, I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session with me. Because if you are fighting with or dealing with or uncertain to unpack those parental influences, the sins of the parents, brother and mother, it's good to have a conversation with somebody else, like myself, who can see through that lens and see you clearly. By doing that, you'll have some clarity and some steps you can take, for, for steps you can take to move forward in your life. And it may find, may find out that we want to work together. I'm not saying this is you have to, but if you do find there's value from what I'm suggesting and you feel you want to invest in guidance, because frankly, I said I went through a lot of this over the last 30 years. I've been, I've been involved in seminars and trainings and, and counseling and, and all these different teachings for over 30 years. I know it's good to get help. That's why I offer it to my clients. I'm not saying that I, I mean, I'm saying basically I learned this stuff, some of the hard way and some with a lot of support. And I use those tools to help out, help my clients. So I'll put a link in the comments for that, for this conversation. And as I said at the beginning, this is a Facebook Live in case you haven't seen my broadcast before. So to summarize about the framing of this, I do these talks every day on Facebook at 5 p.m. Pacific time. You can join me every day on my personal page, which is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. The replays on Facebook, go to facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby author, which is my business page. Feel free to like the page and you can watch my broadcast there. Alternatively, you can find me on YouTube. I actually put these out on YouTube as well. And my channel on YouTube is Barry Selby and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine. Please subscribe to my channel. I would love to get a few more viewers because I ain't got many yet. Um, at least ones that, that subscribe. And finally, I've got a podcast on iTunes called Messages from the Masculine, where I put audio versions of these to, um, to be available for you to download and, and take with you when you go about in the world. Please subscribe to the podcast as well. Um, in summary, though, 
the reminder, what I'm asking you to do, here we go. I was waiting for someone to drop in. I was, I was prolonging the agony, excuse me a second. Okay, some self-review for you as your homework assignment from this talk. I invite you to look back at your parents that you remember, and here's the thing, is look back at them from a clear lens, because the challenge is, especially for some of us, we look back at our parents as if we were three years old. They could do no wrong, everything's perfect, everything's wonderful. If you, can, if you can disengage that for a second and see your parents as they really were or are, and watch their relationship and how they interacted or didn't interact or whatever that was for you, and then look at that and notice the template of your own relationships and see if there's anything that looks similar, overlapping, or, or um, the same as. If you do that, you're more than likely to find there's some overlap, there's some commonality, there's some duality, not duality, wrong word. There's a duplication of patterns that you live in your relationships that you saw in your parents without even realizing it. That's the first step, awareness. The second step is taking action, which is why I put the links in the comments. So your homework is to look into that, to, to consider for yourself, look at your history, look at your relationship with your parents, look at your parents' relationship with each other, and see what was there, what wasn't there, because they also be also be defined by the absence of certain things in your relationship with your parents, or excuse me, relationship between your parents. If you were raised by a single parent, there's a whole um, what's the word looking for? Not kind of worms. It's not a good term. There's a whole array of things. <laughs> I'm trying to be polite here, that you may have dealt with because you didn't realize it because you had a single parent. So there's all different reasons, but I guarantee you, because you're human and you're part of this conversation. You have picked up some habits from your parents who didn't re you didn't realize. It's automatic. We do that as children. It's part of the upbringing we have. Whether we learn by absence or by, by sorry by presence or absence, we learn. And if you're not learning how to do it right, then you may need to get some support. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'm just going to get going on some other things. I wanted to wrap up this talk. Um, you got your homework. I'll put links in the comments so you know where to find me in replays and join me again at 5 p.m. Pacific time every day. And if you have any questions, comments about this broadcast, please put them below. And if you want to share it with anybody you know who think you could benefit from this, please share it with them. And I invite you simply to take care of yourself. This is the, <laughs> says the cutting edge. It's certainly the, the forward thinking part of relationships to think about this as a real topic. A lot of people don't even think about this stuff. And they slide by and have a life that is okay. If you want an amazing relationship, an amazing life, this stuff is important. Take it to heart. Take my suggestions to heart and watch your life transform. I'll see you again tomorrow.